In the mountains of Asia, bamboo forests stretch as far as the eye can see. Rising from the mist like tall sentinels, these bamboos symbolize abundance in the daily life of Asia and harmony in its many cultures. Bamboo's long history is a blend of religion and anecdote, of magic and practical use. Its graceful shape has inspired generations of artists and calligraphers. Its flexibility and strength, even its growing patterns, are celebrated by poet and sage, farmer and engineer. Bamboo has been called the poor man's timber because in many areas of the third world, people live with it from birth until death. From earliest times, this stately plant, which is actually a member of the grass family, has provided food, shelter, medicine, and fuel for over half the human race. Bamboo touches daily existence at every turn. It can be used in place of plastics, metals, and many other non-renewable materials. Fishermen use it to make the frames for their nets. It is still used widely in making baskets and in the manufacture of furniture. Bamboo's surprising combination of lightness and strength has made it ideal for over a thousand uses, ranging from scaffolding many meters high to the delicate chopstick. From badminton rackets to medicine, Bamboo is equally useful in rural areas. The stem, or culm, is used for building materials, for fences, houses, storage bins and water pipes, and for tools and household goods. In many Asian countries, such as China, bamboo shoots are an important daily food. In rural areas close to the forest, they represent an additional source of income. New shoots of bamboo are a crisp, slightly sweet food with the texture of an apple and the nutritional value of an onion. Most shoots are collected in the natural forest, although some countries have established shoot farms. A large percentage are processed for canning, both for domestic consumption and for export. A single factory can turn out up to 150 tons of bamboo shoots in a day. Those shoots that don't go to the factory are taken to the market to be sold. Any surplus is taken home. These unprocessed shoots may be eaten fresh, dried, steamed, or pickled. Bamboo food with bamboo chopsticks on a bamboo table. A way of life. Basket weaving is one of the original bamboo technologies. Today, basket makers still represent the main workforce involved in production of products from bamboo. It's a social occupation. Basket makers tend to work in small groups. For centuries, bamboo has been used to make paper. 
Its long and flexible fibers are especially well suited to this use, both at the cottage level and industrial scale. Because of its extraordinary vitality, bamboo is a highly renewable resource, well equipped to match the ever-increasing needs of our growing population. Yet, despite its importance, little research has been carried out on this friend to the poor. Perhaps because of its seeming abundance, it is often harvested without proper attention to conservation, and the forests which in some areas appear so limitless are actually in danger. Many years ago, Canada's International Development Research Centre recognized the need for research on this long-neglected species. A network of bamboo projects was established throughout South Asia, Southeast Asia and Africa by IDRC. Researchers began to collect different species in living gardens to ensure their survival and to find better methods for increasing production and utilization of bamboo. Bamboo is found naturally on every continent except Europe. But the greatest concentration of varieties, production and utilization is in Asia. It grows in temperatures ranging from minus 40 degrees Celsius to plus 45 degrees Celsius and can survive both drought or flood in altitudes ranging from sea level to 4,000 meters. It is distinguished by its rapid growth, its flowering habits, and its special stem, known as the culm, which is hollow and jointed. Most species flower and come to seed infrequently, every 60 to 120 years, and then they die. Strangely, the flowering of a single species takes place simultaneously all over the world. New culms grow from the seed, but it takes years before the species is fully re-established. Bamboo grows faster than any plant in the world, up to 122 centimeters in a 24-hour period. It can sometimes be seen as well as heard to grow. Bamboo reaches full maturity in a matter of months and is soon ready for harvest. The reason why bamboo grows so fast is its very large underground structure known as the rhizome. This far-ranging network nourishes the shoots and allows the upper plant to grow at a tremendous speed. Bamboo can be divided into two major types, monopodial or single-stem culm, which flourish in cooler northern climates like China, and sympodial or clump bamboo, which does well in the tropical areas like Thailand. Both types are defined by the growing habits of the rhizome. The monopodial type has a long rhizome, which travels up to 100 yards underground. Each node on the rhizome produces a bud, many of which germinate to form shoots and emerge from the ground as single, well-spaced culms. Periods of rhizome growth alternate with periods in which the new sprouts and culms develop. Sympodial bamboo has new shoots coming directly from the first rhizome. In this kind of bamboo, the rhizome and the culm are one. In most areas, the bamboo does the majority of its growing in the rainy season and then rests. The temperate climate of China is good for the monopodial bamboo species. China, like other countries in Asia, is working to increase the productivity and quality of its bamboo. The Chinese Academy of Forestry conducts scientific research in this field. Here, bamboo's physical properties are measured. 
its resistance to pressure and tensile strength. At the Subtropical Forestry Research Institute at Fuyang, researchers are carrying out other experiments. Here, they study the nutritional value of different bamboo shoots before and after fertilization trials. They monitor the incidence of attack by fungi and insects. They measure the leaf size and carbon dioxide absorption levels to determine photosynthesis and therefore growth rates under various cultural practices. This data is then transferred for computer analysis in the lab. Research has been carried on for increasing bamboo yields. Fertilizers can be applied along the line of the rhizome to produce even greater growth. With judicious amounts of this fertilizer, a blend of nitrogen, phosphate, potassium and silicate, the number and size of new culms may be doubled. Tests are also carried out in the lab on the ability of bamboo to absorb various nutrients. At the institute in Fuyang, samples of bamboo are prepared and inspected under the microscope to identify various species. Perhaps the most important work carried out by Chinese researchers is the collection and propagation of their more than 300 native species, which represent about one-fifth of the world's total. Due to its tropical climate, Thailand produces an amazing variety of bamboo. More than half the world's sympodial species are found here. Bamboo occupies over 10% of Thailand's land area in mixed forests and plantations. Increased demand, however, has caused a shortage in several areas. While bamboo in Thailand has always been sought after for its value in construction, handicrafts and nutrition, it is now also widely used to make pulp and paper. This has increased pressure on the forest and research is needed to sustain natural growth as well as to establish commercial plantations. In Thailand, some bamboo is heat cured to protect it from insect attack and to remove moisture. This cleans and hardens it and prevents mold. The culms are then cut to the desired length and stored in curing sheds or bound into bundles for transport. Sometimes the culms are used locally to make furniture. Although usually fastened by lashing, it can be nailed together to make ladders. Sections of the culm are split in preparation for the toothpick factory. Even the byproducts are used, in this case to make charcoal. Nothing is wasted. In Thailand, Fertilization trials and improved methods of propagation are needed to increase production. The tremendous diversity of bamboo means that different species flower and seed each year. 
Researchers are developing techniques for the collection, processing and storage of seeds of the country's most valuable species. In addition to seed research, they are also experimenting with more traditional methods of propagation. As they've been cultured for generations, culm or branch cuttings are planted upright. The only concession to modern methods being plastic bags. When they're old enough, they'll be carefully transplanted to the field. This technique is slow and laborious. Other improved methods, complete departures from traditional techniques have been developed. They produce far more seedlings for far less work. Here, for example, the cuttings are planted horizontally, greatly increasing the amount of spontaneous growth from the culm sections. New growth can also be achieved by planting the culm with the rhizome attached. Living collections representing most of Thailand's native species have been established at three locations in the country. Research has also been carried out on plantations in experimental stations. Bamboo research is still young in Thailand, as in other parts of Asia. The need remains great to increase both the yield and durability. Cooperatives like this one need a steady supply of high quality bamboo in order to survive. Rural people throughout Asia make use of bamboo in every phase of their daily lives. Bamboo, the poor people's timber, for millennia an abundant material for the builder and householder, and a constant source of inspiration to the poet and artist, is now a subject for the scientist and engineer. Bamboo has always been a plentiful, renewable resource. But now, the needs of the population may be overreaching natural supplies. Like the children at shelters, bamboo too must be nurtured so it can survive, grow tall and strong. Will the jungle still be thick and green with bamboo stands when this child is an adult? Will it be possible then to walk out of the village, cut some poles and teach the children to make furniture for the family? <laughs> 